three short verses today, but man, are they packed, right? Let's dig a little deeper. What happened that we just left Jesus at? Last week, we stopped with Jesus, and the last words of that scripture said, the disciples didn't understand about the loaves and fishes, and their hearts were hardened. They were on their way to Bethsaida. But with the storm and all that, they got switched to the other side of the lake, to Gennesaret. But in that word, you're supposed to know that something is up. Because what happened after the last boat story we listened to a few weeks ago? After that story, Jesus went to the other side of the lake, to the territory controlled by the Roman Empire, and there he healed a man from the legion, from the Roman Empire. He healed a man hurt by the soldiers of that empire. He freed a man from the oppression of that empire, and that man, upon being freed, said to Jesus, let me follow you. And Jesus said to him, you, you stay here among your people. Stay here and tell what has happened to you. And that man went out and he spread the word of what Jesus has done far and wide. And so when we get to today's passage and it says, the disciples and Jesus landed in Gennesaret. Mark wants us to know that those disciples whose hearts are hard, who don't understand about the loaves and fishes, aren't the final word about the inbreaking kingdom of God. They're not the final word about what happened that day. They are not the last word on how people will respond to God's inbreaking kingdom. Because when they land there in Gennesaret, from all over the countryside, people come to Jesus. They come with everyone they have who is sick. People come out of the word work to meet and be touched by Jesus. And they say, if I but touch the fringe of his cloak, I will be healed. So what story does that remind you of? Because these three verses of Mark are packed full to remind us that the end-breaking kingdom is powerful. And in that, when he says, they try to touch the print of his cloak, we're to be reminded of the story that follows the Gennesaret demoniac. We're to be reminded about the daughters. And the story of the daughters is a powerful man, a rich and wealthy man, a man in charge, came up to Jesus as an equal, approached him as an equal, and said to Jesus, my daughter needs your help. And Jesus agreed to go with this powerful, wealthy, well-connected man to heal his daughter. But on the way, on the way to heal this sick child, someone in the crowd touches him. Someone in the crowd, we learn, a person who doesn't have a name, who isn't powerful, who has been bleeding for 10 years and no one has been able to help her, who has spent her last bit of money on trying to find a pit of hope, who wanted to be healed, who was wanted to be healed, who heard about Jesus and thought, if I can just touch the fringe of his cloak, I can be healed. And so she reached out while Jesus was walking past and touched the fringe of his cloak, and she felt something changed within her. And Jesus felt something change within him, and he stopped and looked around and said, someone touched me. And those ones, the ones who don't remember, 
the ones who can't understand what happened when Jesus practiced compassion, the ones whose hearts are hardened said, <laughs> how can we find someone who touched you? Do you see the crowd around you? But Jesus looked, and he saw her. He looked into her eyes and saw her. And she acknowledged that she was the one who was seeking him out. And he called her daughter and said, your faith has made you well. This woman who has been kept out of society, who has been cast aside, who has been separated from the community, is made whole and brought into the family of God and becomes a daughter because this is the story of the healing of two daughters. The woman who is unknown and unworthy and unaccepted is now part of the community, is now healed by the touch of that cloak. And that's what Mark wants us to remember. Mark wants us to remember that when the kingdom spreads, when the kingdom of God is in bringing into this earth, and there are a lot of unwanted, unnamed, lost, undesirable, there are a lot of people who have been left out and left behind, who are invited and welcomed into the kingdom of God, not, not because of what they can bring, but because of what they needed. And so Mark, in that brief three sentences, tells us as Jesus walked in the cities and farms, in the villages, that people came to him to just touch his cloak. That those unnamed, needy people, that the people that nobody desires and wants around, the people who are lost and alone, the people who desperately need some healing, those people, those people reached out to be touched reach out to experience the healing presence of Jesus' love, to feel part of the kingdom of God. So how do we apply that to us today? Because I wish I could tell you that if you called me and I prayed over you that miraculously your blood would stop flowing and you would be healed. And I do believe that my prayer can bring you comfort. It can bring you peace. It can help get you through what's happening. But I may not be able to change the outcome. But what can we do? We, as a small group. As I was, as I was thinking about this passage this week, the Illinois Conference and the United Church of Christ have started this campaign to relieve $10 million worth of medical debt. That their goal is to raise enough money to free people from the burden on top of being ill, of having a debt that they can never pay back. Now, I bet you're thinking, how could we I mean, looking around, do something to impact $10 million worth of medical debt. But we, even if we only gave them $100, would relieve $100,000 worth of medical debt. If we could come up together with $1,000, oh, sorry, $100 was $10,000. $100. Um, one thousand is a hundred thousand dollars, and the the Illinois conference is hoping to raise ten thousand dollars, which would get rid of one million dollars of medical debt. 
Can you imagine what that would mean to someone's life? Because our healthcare system is set up to pay 80% of the cost of medicine, of medical care, which means there's 20% that we have to come up with. So if you are in a hospital for four days, you're going to have a bill that is over $100,000, and you may owe 20% of that, $20,000. Because that's how we decided to set up our system of insurance. What would it mean to someone if we helped get rid of that medical debt? And here's what Tracy Blackman said to us at General Senate. She said that if you can come up with that amount, if you can come up with an amount that will help us get rid of a million dollars in medical debt, that she will ask the company to release people in the region, in the area around where the money came from the churches, so that if you gave to the Illinois Conference, that money would come back to Illinois to heal people of the burden of the medical debt. That's a powerful witness of what the community of God can do. If $100 can free someone from $1,000, and if collectively we as 200 churches in the Illinois conference can come up with $10,000, we can change people's lives. Take a burden off of them. And when Jesus was walking around, sharing about the inbreaking kingdom, about the power of God's love, as people were reaching out to touch him, they were experiencing how God can move in and through us and with us. And that even though we don't feel like there's anything we can do when we see how hard it is out there for people, there are little things we can do that will make a huge difference. Wherever he went, whether in the cities or the villages in the farmlands, wherever he went, people reached out to touch him. And when they touched him, they were healed. Amen.